Let's talk about a very useful tip when it comes to retouching images for social media or maybe designing an image or creating a thumbnail. You see, when you're posting stuff on social media, the size is different, the form factor is different and the background is different. That always requires an extra step and a couple of things to keep in mind. It might have happened to you that you retouched an image in your laptop or your computer system and it looks great, it looks amazing, awesome, vibrant colors. But when you posted that to social media, it didn't quite look that effective, right? So today we're going to be answering all those questions and giving you a tip that will allow you to look at the overall image as it would look in social media. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download any photo used in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So let's straight up get into the tip so all you need to do first off let's have a look at the background the canvas background right if you're gonna post this image to social media well you better right click here especially Facebook or Instagram right click here and choose custom but before you choose custom click on select custom color and choose white click OK and then choose custom if that doesn't appear automatically because Social media like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter have white background. So you need to look at your image with a white background. How does that look? Because if you switch to default, if you right click outside the canvas, if you switch to default, it might look great here. It might look contrasty. But if you switch to white, see, it's not looking that punchy, right? So the white is catching all the attention. We don't want that. We need to adjust our image according to the background. Always keep that in mind. Now the second most important tip, when you create a thumbnail or post to social media, the image is not all big, it's small, right? In a white background or whatever background you choose. We chose white background right now, but if you're posting it to your website or somewhere else, check out what the background of that website is and change the color according to that background. We chose white. Now when you post there, the size is small. Always keep that in mind. You can, of course, click on it to make it bigger, but to grab the attention, you need to edit your image that way so that even if the image is of small size, it looks interesting. So all you have to do, go to Windows and then Arrange. This is important. This is important tip. And click on this new window for this document. The name of this document is Pexos Photo 475, whatever the number is. Arrange. Click on new window for this. So we have two documents, right? Two documents for the same image. And surprisingly, they're not different documents. They're same document, open differently and linked together. Make sense? No, let me show it to you. Go to Windows, arrange and arrange both of those documents, tile two up maybe vertically. And these two are arranged. Now, if you have two screens, two monitors, you can always go ahead, drag it to the other monitor. That way it will be easier for you. But we cannot record two monitors. That's a big problem. And even if we can, it will be difficult for you to see both those monitors on the screen it will be very small. All right. So let's click on this and let's zoom in quite a bit, right? And we will right now retouch the face. And in this one, let's zoom all the way out to this. And this is how it's going to look in social media. Now you can go ahead, come back to this document and retouch the face. For example, create a new layer and name it maybe blemish. By the way, if you want to know more about uh, removing blemishes, check out the video right here. So I'm going to quickly choose spot healing brush tool, choose the blend mode lighten and then just dab it. Right. As I remove these blemishes, have a look. This image is also updating. So you can have a real time look as to how your image is going to look on social media, right? Wide background, small form factor. So click, 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 click. Okay. So now suppose you want to add some curves. So I will click on the gray white icon, adjustment layer icon and choose curves. And then maybe you want to just brighten that up and maybe increase the contrast on the face. It looks right. But does it look good on the overall image or maybe it looks good on the overall image? Does it look good in the face? So you need to keep all these things in mind. There we go. Now, if you want to add some faded effect right here, right? As you can see, it looks good on the overall image. It also looks good on the face. 
it needs to look good when somebody is zoomed in. It also needs to look good when it's appearing on social media as it is. Maybe you want to color it right now, choose red and increase the reds on the highlights, decrease the reds on the shadows. Now have a look. This is looking good on the overall image, but on the face, it's looking strange. So that way you need to control what looks good when and you need to find a balance. That's very important. So that was one of the ways. Now let's move on to another example. So this was, I hope you get the idea of what we are doing. Maybe you can go ahead and liquefy the face and uh, pull these in and you get the idea, right? So you get two views, one, the small view of social media and one, the big view. In the big view, you can go ahead and retouch intricate parts, intricate elements. And on the small view, you can retouch overall stuff, how it's going to look on social media. And you can test whether that looks good when zoomed in or zoomed out, right? Uh, I just wanted to show you one more thing. Let's cancel that and let's open that again. Windows, arrange, and let's open new window. Okay, there we go. And arrange that as we did to up vertical. There we go. Now let's zoom out in this one. And once you are in this mode, let's zoom in in this one. You don't ever have to zoom in and zoom out. If you were just in one document, you would have to zoom out. How does that look overall? Then zoom in. You don't have to do that. All you have to do, if you're retouching this area, done. If you want to move to some other areas, you will hold the space bar. Cursor changes to a hand, then move to that area, edit that area. You already have a zoomed out version. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's move on to the next example and let's see what the next example has in store for us. Now, if you're creating a thumbnail, this is going to be really, really useful. So I'm going to go ahead in my folder, stock folder maybe, and then open up this image. Now, this is a very huge image. See, 5216 into 4912 pixels. And if you cannot see it here, you can click on this arrow and choose document dimensions. It is important. Now, let's make it smaller because it's too huge to work with. All right, so let's make it a little bit smaller so our processes are faster. And anyway, we are creating a thumbnail so it's going to be squeezed in even more. So let's keep the width at 3000 and click OK. Everything automatic and everything linked. OK, I just made it smaller, doesn't matter much. Now, we are creating a thumbnail. For a YouTube thumbnail, the aspect ratio is 16 is to 9. Okay, for any video thumbnail, the aspect ratio is 16 is to 9. So I'm going to press C for the crop tool or you can also click here. And then you can choose 16 is to 9. Now, I want to make the crop bigger from this side. So what to do? Move this point, anchor point and place it there and hold the shift and alt together. Shift and option if you're using a Mac and then let's make it bigger. It will just snap into the edges and hit enter once you're satisfied. Now we need to extend the image for some text right here. But before we do that, let's do our trick, right? What was the trick? Windows, arrange, new window for that one. Let's select the move tool and then windows, arrange, vertical. There we go. And let's zoom back in on this one. And on this one, let's zoom back out. Now we need to extend this. So we will work on this one. It's not an intricate retouching. We don't need to zoom in on that. So all we have to do, let's create a solid color adjustment layer and color it any color and bring this below this one. Just double click on this one and then just pick this color. You could have also created the layer already beneath it so you don't have to do that extra step. But anyway, all right, that's looking fine. Now you can go ahead on this one and erase that area and blur that area out. As you can see, let's come to this document. As you can see, there's a line here. I don't know whether you can see it in this screen, but there is indeed a line here. So what you can do, you can take the eraser or mask it out. So click on this mask and take the brush. Make sure the foreground color is black. Make it bigger, make it softer. Hold the alter option, the right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard. Make it soft, make it smaller and just paint in around the edges. Now as you can see that line is gone, that line is going away because we made it smoother. There we go, it's gone. Now suppose you want to introduce some text and before you do that you can always arrange the size right on this one. So click on this document. Control or command T, you can always go ahead and arrange the size on how that will look on a thumbnail. 
there you go this is something you cannot do with this one with everything zoomed in you would have to zoom in and zoom out again now suppose you want to introduce some text okay there's a big piece of text a small piece of text any text would do let's choose say let's type in box okay move tool controller command T let's make it a little bigger holding the shift key dragging it okay and double click on the T to select all of the text and let's choose a font called impact all right Photoshop is acting slow today there we go we chose impact and choose the color double click on this and choose the color say white it looks nice and there we go now beneath box we want to add some text if you open this document right exactly beneath box we cannot do it with this because this is zoomed out right so we would select the T and do it on this one create a new layer first select the move tool create a new layer first T let's write anything uh, like your life depends on it I didn't write that let's make it a little bigger controller command T and keep it there and let's change the font double click on the T to railway it's one of my favorite fonts if you want to go ahead and download that go to fonts.google.com that's an amazing resource for all kinds of amazing fonts and uh, it has categorically distributed every font serif sans serif um, handwriting and all the other stuff all right so railway regular or maybe bold let's choose that and controller command T let's make it a little smaller like this and there we go just beneath this it's aligning pretty well there we go we couldn't have done this with this one because this is all zoomed in we can see whether this is aligned or not I think we need to shift it a little bit to the left now it looks right and make it a little larger to align it with X now suppose you wanna play with some colors so you would select the T and select the X and maybe change it to red so I would choose the color CD 201 F okay move to there you go have a look at the overall image that looks fantastic doesn't it so that's how you work when you're creating a thumbnail uh, you have one zoomed out and you have one zoomed in for alignment and stuff for intricate stuff let's come to the last example the last example is one of the thumbnails which I actually created for one of my tutorials alright so here it is the knockout now do you know what the problem with this thumbnail is have a look at the edges this edge is fine but if you zoom out if you have a look at the overall thumbnail it's not contrasting with the background have a look it's matching up with the background why because it's all white and the background is all white we need to take care of that right so first off what do you need to do go to windows arrange and then new window right and then zoom it all in in this one and then windows arrange to a vertical there you go it's arranged now we want to add some vignette effects so that it contrasts out from the background let's zoom out a little bit on this one and then I've already done what we had to do in this side on the zoomed side I added the PS logo and all the other stuff let me show you added the Photoshop logo and the knockout stuff and aligned it all well added some shadow here we have already done all we had to do in the zoomed in area for the zoomed out area have a look it's all matching so you need to add a vignette so just above the image just above the curves we can add a levels adjustment layer click on this gray white circle adjustment layer icon and choose levels now once you choose levels all you have to do take this ladder from right to left just like this and then with the brush tool selected take the brush tool and then come to this one make the brush a little bigger make it a little harder and make sure the foreground color is black and just dab once then controller command T make it a little bigger by the way I'm holding shift and alt right to make it larger from the center and then make it larger just like that that looks fine now click on this and then once you click on the mask the mask properties open up and if you cannot see the mask properties you know what to do right go to windows and then make sure properties is checked okay check in the properties now increase the feather a little bit there you go now you have the contrast still you can go ahead click on this controller command T and edit the vignette effect looking amazing isn't it so once you're done once you're done with all the thumbnails and stuff close one of these 
Okay, now once you want to save it, it's crucial when you save it. If you look at the dimensions, it's 40532280. It's not what YouTube requires. You need to check it with your website. What is the size of the thumbnail? For YouTube, it's 1280 into 720. So, what do we do? We won't change the image size because that will lead us to reduction in quality. We don't want that. We would go to File, Export, and then Export As. It opens up a complete dialog box where you can go ahead and resize your image, convert that into sRGB, okay? So width, you need to set to 1280. It will maintain the aspect ratio and everything. Format, you can choose JPEG. And you can also choose the quality and it will give you an estimated size right here. It's taking time, it's loading right now, but it will give you an estimated size. And there we go. And here it's something very important. Color space, convert to sRGB. Make sure that is checked because if that's not checked, the colors will change when you post it online. If your image is say in pro photo RGB, it's going to create a problem. Right? If it's already in sRGB, it doesn't really matter. But just for assurance, make sure this is checked if you're posting that online. Everything else is fine. Once you're ready, just click on export and everything will be great. All right. Now, as you can see, the image is not looking good. See, it's cut off. What? What's happening right here? Now, sometimes Photoshop does show you some errors. In those cases, what you need to do, cancel that. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes I'm glad it happened right now. It happens once out of 100 times. So it's very rare. So in those cases, what you need to do, create a new layer, press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Command, Option, Shift and E if you're using Mac. So we're going to press Control, Alt, Shift and E. It creates a merged layer of all the other layers on a separate layer. Now what you need to do, click on this on the Layers plan panel, click on this grid and choose duplicate layer and document new you can name the new document anything you want i'm going to type in abc and now you can go ahead file export export as sometimes that kind of error happens and this time i'm guessing that it won't happen and it shouldn't happen now we can go ahead and choose the size whatever you want it shouldn't happen this time choose the format and just so you know when that error happens you know what to do now it's all fine looking great Make sure convert to sRGB is checked. Click on export all and it will open up the dialog box where you can locate where you want to save it. So that's all for this video. Just a quick recap when you're posting something online. Number one, make sure you change the canvas background to the background of the website. For example, Facebook has a white background. You change your canvas background to that background. Nowadays, YouTube is coming with the dark theme and also its background is a little off white these days match it match whatever you're creating thumbnail or post to that kind of background match it number two dial it all up right go to windows arrange open the same image in another document zoom out one zoom in one that will help you and save you a lot of time when it comes to workflow and also give you an overall look of the image how it would look in social media and number three once you're exporting it, make sure you're exporting it in the size of the social media. Facebook demands some other size, Twitter demands some other size, YouTube demands some other size, your website maybe demands some other size. Make sure you're dialing in the size right and also checking in convert to sRGB. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.